CES In-Depth. Coming to you live from the CNET stage at CES 2016, I'm Brian Cooley, ably joined by Mr. Scott Stein. And we're going to recap the major news and announcements from today. Yeah. The official first day of CES 2016 might fool some folks because we were really jamming yesterday. Yeah, this feels like it's been the 19th day yes. of CES. <laughs> I wasn't going to go is there. This? Yeah, it's amazing. Well, we've, seen, we've talked about so much already, and we and some of us even been briefing about some of these things. So, yeah, it, it does feel like we've known about some of these for a while, but everyone's getting to see it. Experience yeah, see, this is interesting. Yesterday was the press uh, events day that we brought to you exhaustively. Lots of blog posts and videos and slideshows and our anchored coverage of the press conferences. And then CES opens up kind of like for the industry to come in here. It's not like it's it's really opening today. It's opening the floor today. But CES officially started jamming first thing yesterday morning. So it's a kind of a split open. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Uh, virtual reality, something that we're both really interested in. Yeah. VR is big here at the show. No surprise there. But surprising news came out here today from Oculus that just announced finally some specifics. Right. The Rift headset, the most celebrated of all the VR high performance headsets, will go for $600 and will ship in April. We've got something official we can hang our hat on. So, yeah. It's, uh, oh yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> How are you feeling about that? I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was like 600 watching bucks, video. what do you think? Yeah, you're, a, watching, you're watching your video. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a high price because, first of all, the development kit costs less. And, you know, but, but Oculus is saying they want to get this to people's hands. They're saying they're not, you know, they're trying to cut it as affordable as possible. But we saw VR headsets last year that were mobile Gear VR, $100, you snap it into your Samsung yeah, phone. Yeah. Google Cardboard is free, it's nothing like this. But $600 sounds high, plus the coolest part of Oculus are those touch controllers. Yep. Those are not included in this package. But they are coming out. They're coming out, okay. they've been delayed until later this year, so who knows how much those cost. Then you have to buy the gaming PC. Oculus said you can get a whole package, minus the controllers for $1,500, they're gonna bundle it. So it's, they're still standing by that, but it's a lot. We're in the serious gamer price realm. We are. For the whole kit. Once you get a machine that's powerful enough, if you don't already have one, controllers, headset, accessory, something, I'm sure. Yeah, and then who knows how much the uh, HTCs will be, because I feel like that will be even higher. Oh, interesting. I think so, because it's including more. HTC Vive, the other yeah. PC platform, uh, they want to include everything in that bundle, which they have not priced yet. You get two lighthouse sensors, which, which shoot lasers around so your the room. room. sensors that monitor your movement. Right. Then you get the two wireless controllers and the headset, so you got to think. Oh, that seems certainly closer to a grand. Yeah, I think it could be a grand, and that really gets into uh, a high territory. Yeah. Very specialized. Who's going to go in for that? But I did look at Vive here. The coolest thing about yeah. Vive is that camera. The camera does something that VR should do more often. It lets you see the real world yeah. when you got that crazy goggle on your head. It goes into some sort of almost feels like bat vision, and which means that you can, you can see everything almost like a heat map. Uh, the, the room, furniture, people. So if you get too close to a wall, you won't hit the wall. And also you'll be able to find the sofa not, without having to take that thing off all the time. More VR needs that. Huh. And they tweak the hardware, it feels better. I look ridiculous wearing this. Everyone uh, does in Everyone VR. does. Everyone does. You send up in these weird postures, looking at strange places. Yeah, it's absurd. Yeah. But the controllers, very similar in some ways to Oculus Touch. It's, it's amazing to experience, but again, oh, wow. I should, no one should <laughs> ever watch themselves on VR. VR. Burn it'll, the tape it'll every bring, time. It'll bring you <laughs> right on down. All right, so yeah. in this same category, vaguely, we saw something that's a very different take on AR, yes. which is the Intel Dacry helmet. This is meant for enterprise use. Uh, here's an example of it. This is an example of, let's say, a person working in a, a power plant or a nuclear factory or something, and they have the helmet that has a forward-looking RealSense 3D camera, an Intel product, and it's got an AR of displayability on the visor. So it can see what you're looking at, make sense of it, and then animate it in front of you. It's definitely you know, in the AR camp, but so rich. And it reaches to the cloud to figure out what it's looking at, and then to pull in augmentation in real time that is about the current state of what it's looking at, as opposed to stale, pre-existing information that maybe a lesser headset would do. This and is. It, it, it looks amazing. I yeah. mean, the demo looks great. It's similar in a lot of ways to what Microsoft HoloLens has been exploring, yes. except this is shipping now, so they're getting a leg up on that. But it's also showing that HoloLens, they, they've already said it's for enterprise for now, and that's where it's going to be targeted. And other smart glass manufacturers seem to be leaning on that. Google Glass 
the next yeah. version has been said it would be enterprise. So it sounds like for now, smart glasses are going enterprise. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Yeah, it's moved away from consumer. They don't know what to do with it yet. But companies like Carl Zeiss or Optics actually are developing, trying to make you glasses. You saw a nice reference design I did. today. Yeah, I saw, it looks like my glasses. And they're yeah. carving out a space where you can put electronics. So it's like they want to if build it and they will come maybe. They're getting ready for that idea. Yeah. But it's still a while off, I think, before we're putting smart Interesting glasses. Interesting to see a company that's going into the electronics business without doing anything electronic. I mean, Zeiss is giving you a plastic and glass and sculpted reference frame, but yeah. they're not doing any of the guts. Yeah, it's a startup that was funded by Carl, uh, Carl Zeiss Foley, so an independent company, okay. and they're doing this, yeah, exactly. They said it's all classic optics. They're just yeah. carving out the, I thought that was kind of cool. Tech that's the, that's the piece we need, because tech companies don't know how to do that. No. Don't style they do anything. They need that help. They right. need that help big time. So they're doing that. Okay, let's go to, um, let's switch to the automotive front, which would be a whole different hall. That'd be the North Hall, uh, which is here at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Um, the Faraday Future is probably the most talked about car here. This is a long expected uh, Chinese backed electric hypercar that has uh, a single seat that has obviously extreme performance, uh, very exotic, provocative lines, as you can see. Uh, high connectivity, of course. What's interesting about this car, though, a canopy over it. But what's interesting about this car in terms of the auto industry strategy is not that it's electric or anything of that other stuff, but the fact that they've made it on what's called a modular platform, a truly modular platform. They can literally, in the manufacturing, they can reduce or extend the size and length of this thing in modular slices, which is more so than what other car makers do. That sounds a little bit in the weeds and it is kind of inside baseball, but that's, that's a really big topic in the car industry. Um, I'm a little disappointed because this is a super pie in the sky hyper car for nobody. <laughs> I like to see, you know, I get more excited about a Hyundai Sonata than a Lamborghini all day long. I'm weird that way. I like cars that real people can appreciate and buy and really get use out of. Um, you know, I dig the supercars, but uh, th you know, this is in that category, and it's like, okay, talk to me when you guys have brought this down two or three models to what real people are going to buy. Yeah, when I was a kid, and I, I was sometimes went with my dad to car shows, like when I was really like, seeing yeah. things like that, I would be excited. So Everyone it's like a, that beautiful thing. It's yeah. a gee whiz thing, it's like a, a glimpse of the future, but yeah, this is the total weird taste of something Way out there. totally bizarre. But it, it's a huge buzz topic, and they've got a big, a big plant they're opening here in Nevada, uh, kind of like you know who over at the Tesla side. Uh, another car that came out was the Volkswagen Buddy electric concept that flashes back to the old VW classic microbus. Now, to me, it looks like a Toyota Sienna, but supposedly I'm supposed to see microbus in that. I really don't, aside from the badge. Uh, that, that's yeah, not, I would agree. That isn't yeah. the classic Beetle. Or a Beetle bus? No, no. No one took that to Woodstock. No, I don't think so. <laughs> right? <laughs> it looks like a giant Hot Wheels car. <laughs> kind of does. And designed. Yeah. Uh, but an electric effort by Volkswagen. It's always interesting to see a German car company do pure electric because they were banging away at diesel for so long as a national industry. Um, a lot of them are coming to the electric table. The other pure electric, of course, being detailed here, not completely unveiled, is, or, I mean, it's unveiled, unveiled before, is the Chevy Bolt. This is the craziest naming story in the auto industry. Um, Bolt and Volt sound almost exactly the same on, over a phone connection, unless you're in person. And then someone says, did you mean Bolt or Volt? And you say Bolt or Volt again, they still didn't hear it right. So then you tell them the first letter, you say it with a V. Well, a V sounds like a B. So you still can't tell what they're talking about. V and B <laughs> sound the same, Volt and Bolt sound the same. Did anybody check this out before yeah. they went to market with this? I think I'd been secretly confusing them for years too. Oh, or believe me, mind, a, a lot of people will. Or not yours, yeah. Anyway, so let's talk about appliances. What do we got there? Well, uh, the one we were talking about yesterday, that re ridiculously crazy Samsung fridge. I still I've, can't get it out of my mind. I've I grown like to like it. it. it uh, yeah, it, 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 has, it has ideas. I've grown to like it. Really? What yeah. part do you love the most? Two things I like the most, the cameras that are built in. That's cool. Answers a real need. How many times do you go to the grocery store, you're going to buy something, you're not sure if you already have it, and you don't know what's in the fridge. But the cameras will let you log in remotely and see what's in the fridge. Snapshots, not video. Right. Uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting is the, uh, the relay or the mirroring of what's on your TV. So the TV's on in both places, kitchen and you know, dining room, whatever. Because mm -hmm. how many times are we sitting there cooking and, and doing this, looking through the doorway at the TV, because we, we hear the scene just got interesting, and uh, we do this. And I, I still really like the idea, I know you could do this some other way, but, uh, but some sort of central hub where people could uh, have a little whiteboard, a little family communication. Yeah, I, I'm on Maybe the fence a, on that still. I know, it's a, you could always do it another way, but I, I feel like there's still something in that. Maybe not on a fridge, Yeah. but I still need to put something like that in, in the kitchen. It's quaint. 
It's the family hub. It's the family I forgot the word family's in it. Yeah. Damn it, it's got to be quaint. family hub refrigerator. Ah, I forgot about that. It's, it's All right. Like well, uh, speaking of cool, uh, we've got a very cool announcement that came from LG in the area of refrigerators. For this one, our own BT is standing by at the LG booth to tell us about it. BT, what's up? All right, Brian and Scott, I'm gonna one-up you right now. You're talking about refrigerators? Refrigerate, refrigerators? I got a refrigerator right here. I got my man, Matt. Matt, what's up, hey, man? What's up, how's it going, V? Uh, say hi to your mom, your dad, to loved ones. Mom, dad, what's up? He famous, hey. he famous. Hey, okay. You know. <laughs> so this is um, LG's signature uh, section of their booth, and it's really a lot of products that are proof of concepts, things we might see in the future, but really cool idea. See them in the future, yep. He said definitely. Hey. How, you know how many times we've seen things here that are not definitely? No, man, take my word for okay, it. Okay. So um, I want to see, th this is supposed to be like one of the coolest refrigerators here on the show. Can you kind of show us some of the things this thing does? Yeah, yeah let's do it, man. Okay, okay. So check it out. This is going to be tempered glass here on the front. If you double tap, it's going to light up and show you a display just so you can kind of see what's here for easy grabbing. This is called a door within a door, okay? So you're going to have, obviously, your beer your, and your hard ciders. All your stuff that you drink a lot is going to be here for easy access. My, my, mine are like orange sodas. Me too, man. Me too. Oh, <laughs> no, and then they moved the display over here so you can control your refrigerator and your freezer temperature right here. Okay. Question. Can, can I do the little knock-knock? No one's watching. Do it. Knock-knock. Oh. Who's there? Boom! You can't do that with your refrigerator. All I don't right. think so. All right, and check it out. Do you see this little door open light? Right down there. I'm going to step right here, uh -oh. it's going to automatically open for you. Did you see that, Brian and Scott? You saw that, right? That's Wait, what I, I thought. I think they saw it. Let's do let's it again. Do, let's do it one more time. Oh! Voila! <laughs> it's like magic. All right, but... Matt told me one time, but wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. There Check is. it out. Open the freezer doors, and they're going to automatically slide out for you. But say uh, you have this one open. You're unloading like some things that need to be frozen. You give it a few seconds, the other ones are going to slide back flush. No! Can your refrigerator do that? That just happened. It, it just happened. All right. Matt, thanks so much for this. Hey, thanks for your time. I'm All right, here. appreciate it. See you later, Good bro. guy. Later, bro. All right. All right. Matt, that, that's one of the things you can find at the LG Signature Series. All right, we're going to keep on walking around. They're showing off another concept. They're dual view curved OLED, right? It's got smooth curves. Smooth it out. We don't, I don't think you're going to be using this at home or anything, but you can see it probably used in like corporate displays or cool buildings. And then we also have over here another LG Signature, their washer and dryer, double loads. We're going to maybe visit this back in a little bit, but let's just keep on going this way because I got, I got one thing I got to show you, okay? Let's come over here. So smart appliances, big thing here, but what about the smartest, smartest, Styla! Styla! Benet, come here. Just really quickly, tell us what this is. This is the LG Styler. And what does it do? Why is it shaking like a salt shaker? Well, you're watching it shake, shake, shake. Oh, the shake, ripples shake. away. Shake, is what's do that again. Shake, shake, shake. All right, so it steams and shakes the clothes all just like this, right? Yeah, you're watching it. Basically, it will shake 220 times in a minute in conjunction with using a very powerful true steam generator. So with that steam, it's coming up and it's literally shaking those okay, here, let's, wrinkles here, come here. Let's, let's shake together with it, get ready? Shake, we're styling. All right, thanks so much, Benet. You guys stick it here, CNET.com for everything more, CES 2016. We'll see you guys. Okay, welcome back to CES In Depth. Live at the CNET stage at CES 2016 with the Jolly Neapolitans, Brian Cooley and Scott Stein. We're well, recapping the news of the show so far. Next up, a topic near and dear to your wrist. Yes. Wearables. Wearables. And it's, it's, it's hard for one person to cover. we got a lot of people out there looking at yep. stuff at this show. The big one that everybody was following was Fitbit. Fitbit made their announcement. Mm. They're the market leader in wearables. Yep. And, uh, and they announced a watch. And I think the reaction was a little mixed. Um, it's called the Fitbit Blaze. Okay. $200. This uh, does a lot of what the Fitbit Surge did last year, the, the Obama smartwatch, uh, the mm -hmm. one that he uses to, to get fit. does not have GPS, but it pops out 
It has a variety of accessories. It's almost Apple Watch-like in the sense that it's competing mm. for style. Steel, yeah. leather, and that's a trend throughout the show. Yeah, materials are big at the watch category this year. Gets notifications. Um, it gets just some of them by design. It also has some coaching, a little bit. Fitstar, which uh, was acquired by them, they put a couple of coaching routines, and maybe we'll see a little more of that. That's the thing that's missing in wearables. Um, but you know, some people wonder, what am I going to do with this? Um, why is it trying to compete with watches? Other people think, well, I don't really want a fancy smartwatch. I want a watch that does fitness and just a bit more. And just a little more notification. Yeah, so it might actually do quite well. That's interesting. Yeah, maybe we're trying too hard with smartwatch. Uh, too rich, too complex, too many different use cases it's trying to map to as opposed to just give me a little bit that we can all relate to. Yes. And the fitness piece and a fashion piece. And I think we're a little, little, a little bit away from the super connected watch that's a remote, maybe wireless networks, and that's all of the discussion. Yeah. In, it's like early smartphones. Right now, that stuff could be great later when homes get more connected, but yeah, not out yet. Front, out, in front of its, uh, out in front of its skis, potentially, at this point. The other trend uh, is, is uh, more brands getting into wearables. It's, it's all about fitness at this show. Under Armour, huge brand, yep. uh, announced a ton of fitness tech, health box, and connected running shoes. Yeah, you had the shoes on yesterday. I wore the shoes yesterday. Yep. These, are, these have a chip inside. You do not charge them. You do not replace the battery. You can't replace the battery. They last the life of the shoe, which for a running shoe is supposed to be about 450 miles. Uh, these check stride. Under Armour has a new app that launched this week uh, that is meant to be more of a complete hub. Interestingly, it allows a lot of other hardware to connect. Uh, Withings and Fitbit and huh. Apple Health. That's a scale. The Health Box is a scale, heart rate strap, fitness band, and they also have heart rate headphones coming out. So they're just throwing the right, book. They've got a pretty complete array right now of they're, a fitness platform, yeah. not just products, and they're going a little bit after Apple um, uh, Health Kit. They trying are, to unify the fitness pieces in one platform. Yeah, and after Fitbit, and they're trying, I think it's reminiscent of what Nike had done before. Uh, the question is, you know, is it all going to work? Uh, people do, do people want all that stuff? Uh, is it too specialized or too? It's all, you know, they're really just covering all the bases, but yeah. I think some of the ideas are interesting. Some of them you wonder, like the fitness band, while it has a lot of stuff, there are just so many fitness bands. So many that aren't and terribly differentiated. No, and at some point you just want to say, I'm going with a popular platform, which is why I think Fitbit is doing right. very well. This right is now. a well known, highly regarded brand. It's not an upstart, so they don't need to do that. On the other hand, when you've got a well regarded brand, you have to reposition it now. Under Armour is known for soft goods, for fabric products. Yes. Now all of a sudden, it's an electronics brand? Surprisingly, no smart clothing. That would be the thing I would think Under yeah, Armour would have done. They have no fiber, they have no smart fiber yet. Texas Skin and others do that. Yeah. They, they are out of that. Maybe, That's interesting. Yeah, maybe in the future. It's hard I to do. I expected that. Okay. Um, let's talk about a little bit of drone activity. Now, the most interesting drone uh, was the Parrot Disco, because the Parrot Disco is not a helicopter style model, it is a fixed wing airplane style model. So this is a, it's about, about three feet wingspan, kind yeah. of a big boy. Yeah, it's big. Big old foam wings you slide on, rear pusher propeller, mm -hmm. and does up to 50 miles an hour, which is absolutely terrifying for something that is consumer grade. That's not all right, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, you control it as usual with, you know, uh, with a mobile device, and they have an optional dedicated joystick uh, thing you can latch onto that. Uh, it'll go two kilometers in range, and then it'll hunt its way back so it can't fall out of range. And if it does somehow get out of range, it knows to come back to your GPS position, which it always timestamps when it starts to go on a flight. Uh, you launch it by just throwing it in the air. Uh, it's... It's pretty cool because the, the main differentiator from this and the various rotocopters is that you get angles, which rotocopters don't do. They're always oh, right. flat. Right. This guy can get swooping angles, and, and you can easily track, I love this, you can easily track a car and shoot video of it. So this wow. could be the best thing for shooting CNET auto videos, is actually a plane as opposed to a drone we can easily outdrive. That would be cool. It's got 45 minutes, I think, of battery 45 life. 45 minutes is yeah. a lot. So it could, it could hang in there. Yeah, so looking at that one, I'll tell you right now. That's okay, cool. uh, let's talk about one, a couple wacky things. Sensor wake is the smell alarm clock. That's what I want. That's what I've been, <laughs> that's what I was looking for. The question is, what smell do you want to wake up to? Right? Some people may not want to reveal that, or no. other people might. No. It's very personal. I hope they don't. I, this is so Facebook's bad enough. Yeah, good old CES for these types of things. Yeah. It's like we look forward to this. These are, are stink cartridges you put in there. Smell crystals? What are one those? of them's coffee. Um, one of them's money. I love that. One is the smell of money. So That's you're like, good. you know, you're, 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 like a, you're, you're like a big baller like BT. That's what you want to wake up to in the morning is money. 
Here goes, which one's that one? This is going to be, that's the coffee. And it puts out the, the scent. No scent's going to wake me up. I don't get that. <laughs> don't right? Think, there's no powerful no. smell response. Maybe and smoke? If it is, and if it, I mean, if smoke would, nice. Right, like, yeah, like yeah give, me a, give me the house burning cartridge. That's the <laughs> one I want. Yeah, I want that one. A terrifying or, wake up Do you have any more of flatulent dog? Can yeah. I put that one in there? You know? Smell of ozone. Yeah, I don't right feel, now. does it also buzz? Does it also do other no, things? No, I bet it doesn't. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. All it does is emit smell. <laughs> Does it condition you? I feel like there'd be a strange conditioning effect. If it, if it, if it, if it fails, it does, yes. Yeah. Uh, Clever Pet, either the coolest or the cruelest technology we've seen yet. A game console to make your dog infuriated. Has to push a button to get fed. I'm getting the HSUS on this so fast. Yeah. This is not going to market. So let's see. Look this at this. the old hamster. I mean, this is like he's the cruel starving. cognitive experiment. And to get fed, he's got to play some idiotic game. Are you How kidding? How is this a game console? Feed the dog. Oh, I don't know. Who, what is the value? Like, who wins with this? No, it's like, actually, the... it's actually kind of cool because, you know, dogs and cats love to play games with things that light up and move around. Uh, open up the feeding, and it can, mod it can modulate their feeding. A lot of animals eat super fast when they're left alone because they have anxiety, and they, and they, they puke it all up because they eat too fast. This is a nice way to modulate their intake. We just so, thought, like, I mean, cool. people could do it, too. Modulate your, <laughs> right. your human feedings. Are you kidding? There's no I'll way they're learn. not having these at the staff dinner on Friday. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're all going to have one. We each get a no one way to get, we're, we're all so drunk by then, we can't even operate the thing. It's only three buttons, and we're still starving, right? It's fantastic. <laughs> Here's Cooley. Wait, there's a third button? Oh, that's the problem. <laughs> It'll all work right. eventually. All right, so that about covers the highlights and the lowlights. Yes. Yeah of the best of tech on day one. We call that the best? Wow. Um, <laughs> it's a selection. <laughs> it's a selection a sele of a tech. A sense. A right. sense of... That's right. It was a, a, it was a little a sense of tech. All right, come back at 9 a.m. Pacific tomorrow. We crank things back up again. We'll also, uh, also actually have a live demo of that smell alarm clock. Ashley Esqueda is going to be up here, as, uh, I believe. She's got the demo of that. We'll also have the CTO of an adult video company talking about that and how that industry is trying to penetrate a tight market and seize the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> what? Is that written in there? Plus, we'll see a 3D printer print. <laughs> that prints circuit boards. And if you're just jumping into our CES coverage, there's a lot more to see at ces.cnet.com. Good night, Scott. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>